another podcast. I'm actually out on the river today, um, which is lovely. It's the first trip out on the river since the lockdown now that kind of recreational angling is permitted. I've come out to one of my local little streams, just some small wild brown trout in here. Um, and what a difference the river is from when I was last out at the back end of last year. The, the trees are absolutely laden with green leaves now. The, the banks have erupted in vegetation. Um, and there's a big tunnel of green in front of me with the river running through it. The birds are singing. Um, we're into fully into spring now. And it's strange for me because with what I do, I'm out on the river often, you know, two or three times a week. And I, I get to see gradual changes in the seasons and gradual changes in the fish as they change from feeding to spawning. But I've not been out since kind of grayling time last year so it's all very different which is lovely um, the river here is about oh, 15 feet across it's only a small stream the woods that I'm in are laden with old mossy walls from very old mill buildings and the, the trees have burst through the walls and you know, they're very tall now um, bits of mossy rocks scattered all over the river and old bits of mill wheels and rusty iron um, from industry long gone. Uh, it's quite early in the morning actually. I've come out before it gets too busy. Um, there's not a huge amount of hatching so I've opted for a clink and dink setup. I've got a size 14 black clink and dink fly and then about a foot and a half underneath a, a small size 18 pheasant tail. Um, I've seen a couple of fish bulging in this pool while I'm, uh, I'm facing at the minute. I'm stood out in the middle of the river the pool's about 30 foot in length, it's a medium glide um, with one channel of water right at the top I can see coming through some rocks. So I think what I'm going to do is really prospect up with a clink and dink. Maybe I'll get a, an offer on the clink hammer. Um, I'm more expecting in these conditions um, with these fish to probably get an offer on the nymphs below. So the secret in this little stream is to be very slow and very quiet. The fish are quite spooky. So, what I'm going to do first is just get a bit of line out before I start casting in my hand and then just try and flick this first one up and see how it goes. But it is rushing to be back out on the river. Right, start with a short cast, work my way up. I've not cast a fly rod for about four months or something like that. that. Feels lovely to be back on it. So I can see the clink hammer sitting beautifully. And that little 18 pheasant tail, I'll just be trailing down the river behind it. And I'm hoping these fish haven't seen a fly for a while, but I don't think with these particular fish in this river, that's going to make it any easier. They are really, really spooky. The rod I'm using today, seven and a half foot, three weight. Uh, I've got nine feet of tapered leader. And then around two feet of tippet on the end of that. Just on the lip of the pool here, and I'm just suffering from a touch of drag. So I'm making a, a slack line cast. I'm just going to move up a foot now. I've fished that lip of the pool out, and that will improve the presentation of the fly a bit. Right, I'm dropping this fly a bit longer, a bit further upstream now. There's not really any um, particular bubble streams or tongues of water just yet in this pool, which I would want to prospect specifically. The fish could literally be anywhere from bank to bank. So it's just a case of fanning out the cast and working upstream. Right, get the old wading stick, plod up one. It's one of those um, slightly uneven bottoms on this stream. and It's often a lot deeper than, than you think it's going to be. One of those streams where you're stepping off the bank thinking you'll be up to your, your uh, calf muscles and you're 
and then you're suddenly, before you know it, you're up to your waist. Right, I'm going to try uh, dropping some there of the right hand side of the stream. There's the odd little bit of movement here in the pool, but it's, it's slightly deceiving because it looks like fish potentially bulging, but it's actually the little seed husks off uh, some of the trees just dropping in the water. And you don't see them drop because you're watching your fly, but out the corner of your eye you'll just get drawn to a little bulge. And If you don't quite know what you're doing, you'll be covering seed husks all day instead of fish. Right, another few steps up. Nice and gentle. In fact, I'll just, whoa, just check this fly. Check it's looking all okay. It's a beautiful little woodland stream that. It's a, if you were to imagine a a babbling stream through some green woodland with the sun dappling through the uh, trees. You to picture that now, that's exactly what it looks like. There's a little fish just turned over on my left side here, just off the rock. It's a difficult cast, but I'm going to try and uh, cover it. That's about on it. Probably a bit short, that. Oh, oh I missed it. Yeah, did the uh, clink hammer shot under there. I think it nobbled the nymph, but... Quite often on here, you just get one shot, even just one shot at a pool, and then they're all off. Oh, that would take as well. Third time lucky. No. Right, let's check this fly again, because the. I'm going to check that looks all right. Let's check this nymph underneath. Yeah, that looks good. So now as the pool develops, there's a distinct, uh, distinct current stream on the left hand side. So I think that's where I'm going to probably concentrate my efforts, just in that moving water. That's where the feeding fish are really going to be intercepting food as it travels down that stream of current. There's an awkward little branch hanging from a tree above me and just one little branch just making the casting hard but we'll just cast from the side and see if I can get underneath it. That's better. And there's a good chance they're going to be tucked right up to the bank here so drop one right in the side if I can. Problem is with these little streams when you're fishing close into the bank you only got to hook a leaf that you can't get out. Oh like I've just done. <laughs> is that going to pull through? Yes. If you just hook a leaf and you can't pull it through it means you've got to wade across into where you're fishing to get your fly out and you may as well just give up and move to the next pool a lot of the time. Right, let's venture up a bit more. Feel a bit more confident wading now the water got a bit quicker because I'm not putting horrible great big bow waves at the pool. Right, that's right on the uh, current stream there. Oh, that ducked under close by and I'm thinking it was probably just a rock. Can, can see a rock and it was fairly close to me. Not seen a proper rise really apart from that little fish on the left. But it's a bit early, there's not much fly about at the minute. Oh, I'll just drop one onto this still water just in case. Probably shallowing up a bit here in front of me now. They are great flies for fishing this 
kind of turbulent water, the clink hammers. These have got nice big bright pink foam posts, uh, sorry, pink posts on the top, they're not foam, but yarn posts and they, they really do stand out, even amongst the glare, you can pick them out. I'm approaching the uh, the head of the pool now, and there's kind of the river narrows, or the stream narrows a bit, and there's scattered rocks, and it's forcing all the water through about a four foot gap, and that's what's creating this nice push of current running down. But I'm only about 20 feet away from the the head of the pool now, and I'll fish it right up into the riffle, and then ahead of me the river narrows and probably only 12 to 15 foot across but it looks like there's a couple more nice pools up there too right I think we're nearly done here I'm only a couple of feet a couple more casts and I'll fish this out a couple of half takes maybe Pretty sure at least one of those there, uh, when I covered that fish, was a, a take on the nymph. But unless you actually feel that bump, you can never be 100% sure. Right, we're nearly done. All right, one more right into this fast riffle, and then we'll move up. Right, up we go. Let me wind in, I think. So we've got a few columns of midges starting to appear in the, uh, the shafts of sunlight now that are penetrating through the trees. Difficult cast here. It's uh, behind me is just very low branches so not sure the the best way of approaching this is a cast actually oh it's deep good grief it's deep didn't think it was going to be that deep Right, how am I going to cast here? It's like a... I'm going to do just a basic... I never like to use the F word as an instructor. But it's almost a flick. Just to get it out. Yo! Oh! Take it the clink camera and I missed it. In fact, to be fair, I don't necessarily think it actually took it. I think it just came up and uh, slashed its tail at it and swirled at it, which they often do with these bigger flies. They just can't help themselves and they come and uh, come and bulge and slash at it, trying to sink it. That's oh, that was a take as well. Yeah, they're coming up to the clink camera, but they're not really. They're not really taking, they are bulging, but you've got to strike anyway, just that occasionally you get that fish that looks like it's bulged and it's actually sucked it down. That was nice to see though, some reaction to the fly. It never loses its um, excitement, this kind of fishing, even after 30 odd years small wild streams and wild fish and a little rod it's, uh, and then when you do finally get into one they are pound for pound such hard fighting fish these little wild brown trout might be time to move up a pace I have two or three reactions to the the clink there oops that's a Oh, cat, that's better. And 
it only takes one just have a rush of blood to the head and then we're in right then one more cast here i think perfect slot one right down the middle and then move up it's a bit of a breeze today actually i was surprised when i uh, walked out the door it's quite breezy and even down here sheltered by the trees just occasionally there's a, a swirling a swirling breeze it's neither upstream nor down really it's moving around a lot but the air's quite mild lots of lots of midges now right creep upstream try not to drag this wading stick what i'm walking on here is a sort of like a shelf of very flat bedrock and there's always a danger i've done it before when you walk in a along the shelf of flat bedrock is that suddenly you step off the end and take a dunk i once did that in the river swale in yorkshire but luckily it was nice and warm and the water was quite refreshing right then i've moved up a bit and dropped a longer cast out which is now just meandering down the left bank there's a rock in the center of the river which is splitting it into two here so i've got two kind of tongues of current moving down left and right bank and even in the middle there's a reasonable glide so again the fish could be bank to bank here i suspect in this little pool yeah oh missed another is it going to be one of those days lots of midges now not seeing anything any bigger really there is a hatch of uh, large dark olives and mayflies on this river so it's just the midges out at the minute right move on up again i think i've got probably two or three more moves I mean I mean I mean I mean and it's all gone wrong <laughs> oh no of all the times I thought I would move up and I've moved up just with the last bit of uh, drift left and a fish took the nymph and I was uh, overextended in line and uh, slack line and it couldn't it, it just dropped off that's my own fault always be in control of your fly line even instructors get a bit rusty after three or four months off well at least I had a pull on my string right let's uh, let's keep going I'm just going to check that nymph actually after that exciting I think, if at all honesty with that, the uh, the state of that last cast and line control and what happened, I think the fish really did not deserve to be caught. It uh, deserved to get away from that one. So fair play, fair play, Mr. Trout. Right, last cast in here, I think, and then we're on to the next pool. The next pool looks a lot smaller. Right, grab the old wading stick and off we go. Right, this pool's only 15, 20 feet and it's really a, a gush of water and a big back eddy on the left. Lots of ferns growing out the bank and lots of trees dangling down. And the back eddy is absolutely littered with the debris from the trees all the husks and 
bits of twigs and stuff, so that's going to be unfishable. I think the best I can do here is get a few casts out into the uh, the tongue of water just to see if there's anything there. Just short little taps really, just like we were fishing a spider and just uh, just work up this tongue of current. Keep my wading stick in my hand. Not really expecting much here. Maybe just off the steam there might be one. No, it's, uh, it's a little too little too rough and turbulent here. Almost like a washing machine of water and. They're not the best lies for trout there where the water's swirling because what they really want is a nice predictable line of food, a predictable straight piece of current. And when you get uh, those big washing machines and random kind of multi-directional currents, the, the fish can't just stay still and pick food off. They have to move and they're going to expend too much energy. So they don't really like those kind of uh, places as such. You will still get fish in them but they might be drilled right down at the bottom out of the current and uh, where well, they've just got a bit of it, a few easy pickings but they're not the base for fishing near the surface anyway. So I'm going to skip this one and move up to the next pool which looks a lot nicer. Right I'm casting again looks fairly deep this actually. I'm just having to cast under some, I'm stood under a big canopy of trees as I'm casting. It's just making it hard and then I'm just over the lip of the pool. So again, flat line cast here just to stop the, the drag is uh, essential. I'll just move off that lip now and I've got a bit of a better better casting angle. It's strange for me to have uh, these kind of days to get on the river. Normally I'm back to back instruction and coaching and guiding at this time of year. And uh, rarely get a, a grab an hour or two every week but to come out in the morning and actually get to to fish on a on a spring May day is very unusual. But, um, right, so the downstream wind here, and with this three weight and the clink and dink and the nymph, it's just making casting fairly hard actually. Just, uh, making it really difficult. It's not quite turning over as I'd like it to. Let me just check the leader and everything. Fly looks good. Yeah, it's just a nagging kind of downstream wind and then the, the way the, the trees are set up behind me means I can't quite load the rod as I'd like. But there you go, that's small stream fishing for you. I'm not going to make the same mistake as before and, and start to walk up as my drift is still finishing. Because I don't want to lose another. Right, there's one bulge there. Let me try and cover that, I think. Two or three, two or three feet further up. Oh, I've treed it. There we go. I'm in the tree. Let me go behind me and get this out. Luckily, it's behind me, so I can... Uh, I'm not going to disturb any fish. Stuck in the cow parsley, as we used to call it. I don't know if still, people still call it cow parsley. That's what we used to call it as we were kids. Right, I'm just going to retie this dropper on. Right, I've just retied my dropper because the, the leader had just got a bit kinked where it had been snagged in the cow parsley. And there's a 
wading back into this pool, the duck coming downstream straight towards me. I don't think he's seen me yet. I see me now, he's turned. <laughs> he's turned and he shot off the other way as quick as he can. Oh, there's a fish just popped up right in front of me there. Uh, that wind is really pelting down the stream now. There's a lot of crap coming off these trees. Oy, wading, wading, wading is hard. Oy. Really uneven here, it's going from ankle deep to knee deep within a step and then back up again. Right, let's keep moving up. If I can just get out away of these trees, I can cast a little easier. I think I'll just cut through this wind a bit better, but you wouldn't expect it, but I'm up to my waist here in this tiny pool. And it's really deep. I really wasn't expecting that. Well, that's turning over much better now. Just got a bit more space to make my cast. Oh, I don't want to go any deeper. Oh God, it is going deeper as well. It's, uh, I've never waded up this pool before. I did not know it was going to be this deep. I'll tell you what though, the water's still cold. I've got my left hand's just in the water now and it's, it's pretty chilly. I was, I'm surprised uh, how cold that is. I would have thought with the weather we've been having, this water temp would have been a lot warmer. Right. Oy. Trying to think how many times I've fallen in on the podcast. I think it's just once. So I'm due a dunking pretty soon. Right. My word. It's really hard fishing. I've got trees behind me, casting over my opposite shoulder. One leg is submerged up to the proverbial, and the other leg is stretched up and is only ankle deep. I can only manage a couple of casts here. It's like fishing yoga. Let's get out of the way. That's better. That's better. I'm getting too old for that. Right, some black gnats now. Yes, oh, he's off. Oh. Saw that as well, saw the flash. He was on bump, bump, and then off again. It's only a size 18 nymph, this, so quite got the, uh, the gape of the hook sometimes. But... Yeah, I'm... I say it feels sharp and then I just get, I often prick it against my thumb and actually I think that's just lost its edge that I might replace that with a, a new nymph I think just feels slightly blunted let's pop a new one on well that's two I've lost now oh I saw that flash of gold and bump bump Right, same fly on again, little size 18 pheasant tail. This one feels definitely sharper. I'm not blaming it on the blunt hook, I think it was still sharp enough to, uh, to hook one, but once, you've, once you get the thought in the head that your hook, hook point's been dulled a bit, that's it, you, you can't continue fishing with it. You've got to put another one on, so. I'll drop it back in where that fish took, and you never know, you might have another, another pop at it. Wind's up again now. Right, let's push upstream a touch. That's about where he was. But like I say, in this little stream, once you've uh, pricked one or disturbed one, that can often be it. I can. I've got another twenty or feet or so of pool here. I can cover. And that duck's just sat on the rock keeping one eye on me now. He's just trying to work out how close he wants me to get before he clears off. 
not seen any dippers yet, normally quite a few dippers on here. That's a better cast. That's running down just nicely now. Duck thunder, but I'm not convinced that was a fish. I think that was a I can see it shallows up there a little bit, so I'm suspecting that was just a rock. Oh, I've just missed another. I do not believe it. As I was picking off to cast, one's grabbed the nymph. And again, I saw him and felt the knock and then uh, he must have just seen the nymph rising and he's had a snap at it. That's three now I've, uh, I've connected with. Uh, it's all part of the fun. <laughs> I think it, it's what makes this uh, this kind of fishing so much fun. You know, the wading and the little pools and the, the crafty little fish. And it's so interesting, there's so much going on. And the fish are just seeming to get the better of me today, but that's fair enough. That's what fly fishing should be. It should be... Uh, there should be days and times where the fish win. And if you uh, if your technique's not quite on it, then um, you either get lucky or they uh, you can't really complain. Right then, let's move up. I'm just going to wait till my drift finishes. I just dropped it back in where that um, where that trout took, just in case. Just in case he wants another go at it. But. I don't think he's got, going to be there anymore. He's probably gone through his little bolt hole. I'm going to get across the other side, I think. How deep is it going to be there? Is it still deep? No, it's shallowed up a bit now. And then I can put a cast over my proper shoulder, as it were, and just present the fly with a little more ease. There we go. And that wind's just dropped as well. It makes such a difference when you're not really geared up with an outfit that uh, it's right on the edge of its casting this with this little rod with a, a bushy clink and a nymph and a kind of, it's only a seven foot rod and there's a good 12 foot a leader and tip it on there. So it's, it's just on the edge of its casting ability. So you do get to that situation where you get a downstream wind and uh, it makes it quite hard, whereas it's just dropped off now and it's absolutely perfect to cast, it's lovely. Right, I think we're done for this pool and then we're done for a while, I'm going to have to get back on the path. There's nothing really worth fishing now for a <coughs> hundred yards or so, so I'll have a couple more casts into this. Nice riffly bit here, and then um, I can find a way out. Yes, there's a, just about get out here, I think. Right, we're done here. I'm going to wind in and get out, and then uh, move up. And the bluebells are still out, which is beautiful in the woodland carpeted with them here. Right, I'm just back down into the river. Further upstream, just got off the path. Getting quite busy now with dog walkers. And I think this is my last bit of fishing for today really. I'll, I need to get across a touch more. So this is my last shot. I don't actually netting something. Otherwise it's going to be 3-0 fish. Right then, the river's quite wide here, it's a good, well, wide for this river anyway, it's 15 or 20 feet. And there's a, the river actually splits in two above me, so I've got two separate little, well, the main river and a tiny little carrier that comes in on my right, and there's two or three different current streams snaking in at the top, and that's where I'm going to try and drop the fly. Like 
let's say I've not really got much of a room for error here I'm just going to work a bit of line out starting close in you can see where I want to be it's beautiful here the banks are absolutely covered in bluebells on my left and, and then there's a meadow and the sun's shining on the meadow and the wild flowers are all swaying in the wind it really is pretty there we go it's just where I want to be just there no Right, try a bit to the left. Well, I'm moving my cast from right to left here. Started off in the current stream on the right and then run it down each little line of current. But I was really hoping for a fish on that first cast. I got it just right, just where I'd expect him. Oh! Don't know if that was a take or not, but uh, when I uh, when I lifted into it, unfortunately, the cling camera has popped through the water and made a right old racket. I would have thought that scattered every self-respecting fish anyway. Might just try. Yes. Oh, I can't believe it. It's off again. That was a decent fish. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a nice trout for this stream that was he was on for two or three seconds and then he's off <laughs> there you go I don't think I need to say any more about that one it put a real bend in my rod that and a thump 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 and I saw it at the surface Well, that's me done. I've absolutely loved it this morning. It's been wonderful to get back out on the river and I think it um, just makes you feel how, how much you take take this for granted when you can't, can't get out and do what, what you absolutely love. So it's been a beautiful morning. Lost four, um, one was my fault, um, three, the, uh, but that's not what it's about today. It's just getting back out and soaking up this atmosphere and getting back on the river. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you want any more information about our fly fishing lessons, please visit us at www.peaksflyfishing.com or for more info on our premium fishing flies, it's shop.peaksflyfishing.com. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.